If you're anything like me, you've probably felt completely lost at some point trying to learn AI. One day you're reading about GPT, then self-attention, transformers. What is a perceptron network? How is it different from a neural network? I'm a staff data engineer who recently joined an AI research team building foundational models. And over the past six months, I've been learning AI in public. And today I want to show you the conceptual map that helped everything click for me. I'll also share some key takeaways in my six month learning journey for each level, as well as resources to get a quick grasp of the basics and who I think should specialize at each level. We all have finite time, so you should only go deep where it really matters for the work you're trying to do. By focusing only on the levels that matter for your goals, learning becomes more manageable and sustainable. Let me show you how all this fits together before we dive deeper into each level. At the application level, we have tools like ChatGPT. These applications take an input from our user and then pass it to a specific model, like in our case, let's say GPT-4.0. And the various AI models have different architectures. So GPT-4.0 you can say is a transformer model. And the transformer model then has multiple transformer blocks. And these transformer blocks are made up of things like self-attention, feed forward networks, our layer connections, our layer normalization. And then it all boils down to a bunch of math, matrix multiplication at the bedrock. But I hope this kind of gives you just a big picture of how these different terms fit together. Let's dive into each one where I can share some key takeaways I had in my six month learning journey so far who I think should specialize at that level and share some resources. All right, so at the AP application level, it's really learning about basic prompt engineering, the limitations of AI models in general, and how to select the right tools. And also maybe just a higher level thinking of how to adapt to AI. And so some key takeaways in my first six months, your prompt specific, say exactly how you want your output, what your question is, what problem you're solving. Try to provide enough context. You have to think about what question to ask or what the right thing to say is and what's relevant. And you need to do this in a way that doesn't overwhelm the model with a bunch of noise to confuse it. Another key thing was from this generative AI for everyone course from deep learning AI is that AI is going to automate tasks, not necessarily entire jobs. And by automating tasks, it frees you up to work on other things, higher level things that humans are better at. And that's where my philosophy of augment stay human comes from, which Stay tuned for another video to hear more about that. And finally, at this level, it's kind of helpful to think about the higher dimensions, perhaps, uh, of how words are just represented in a higher dimensional embedding space, or at least starting to wrap your head around that. And so I've shared a few resources here that I found helpful at this stage. Uh, some of my own writing on the topic, this was kind of a nice summary of different prompt techniques that I learned, uh, and the, my video about thinking in higher dimensions, how to do that. And at this level, it's, it's only worth really like going deeper beyond the basics if you're a prompt engineer or if you're building customized workflows using custom GPTs or Gemini Gems, for example, um, and optimizing these for either a product-facing use case or for yourself, a very intensive workflow. Uh, but just definitely getting a basic understanding is important here. Moving on to level two, we have our modeling layer. And at this level, I think it's important to get an understanding of the different nuances between the models. Like, for example, we mentioned GPT-4.0 versus O1 what that means, uh, the trade-off maybe between how deep a model thinks, how fast it is, um, how much breadth it covers, or whether it's more tailored for a specific use case, and then being able to use that to select the models that you need. I also think at this level, we get to techniques like retrieval augmented generation, things like chatting with your own data. This is a cool course I took on how to do that. I even trained a local LLM on my Obsidian using RAG, which was really interesting. And my key takeaways at this level were that RAG is a really powerful technique to be able to use your own data. And by using your own data, you can get much more interesting results if you have problems with too much information. And for me, kind of a surprise takeaway from my learning at this level is that AI, in my opinion, is best for distillation, or in our case, generative AI is actually better for distillation, being able to search through information and find what you're looking for. And at this level, I think this is really relevant for AI engineers or people building applications on top of AI, building products with AI. Like it's helpful to have a really strong understanding of the different models and different modeling techniques or ways of calling model APIs to integrate with your product. All right, moving on to level three, the architecture. Now this is where you start to get a high level understanding of the different common architectures like transformers, kind of convolutional neural networks or current neural networks. There's many others, but for me, this is sort of the big three I've been focusing on. Um, you get a high level understanding of the neural networks of, of how they work, those feed forward networks and the backbone of AI. Um, and you start to understand the difference between pre-training and fine tuning maybe a little bit here. Um, for me, like this is where you can kind of dive into PyTorch. I share some notes here. This Neural Networks and Deep Learning book was a really cool introduction to neural networks. 
and really the math behind it as well as just the foundations. I feel like this was really important. Um, I have some other content on like what is a neural network, how do you build one, how do you build one in PyTorch, thinking of through this model embedding layer. And some key takeaways for me at this level is that neural networks are really just these universal function approximators. They take some input and then through all the parameters of the model, they're able to produce some output. And those parameters are not programmed into them. They're learned through training. And at this level, I think it's worth going really deep. And for this level, I think it's really worth going deep if you're trying to do some model fine tuning, perhaps as an ML engineer, or you're an AI developer deploying models at scale, or really trying to optimize model performance. And this is where I think I'm kind of at right now. I'm still trying to get more of a, a breath here. Uh, and starting to go deep into some fine-tuning projects I want to do. And now at level four, the component level, you're really starting to get into the implementation and the nuances of these architectures. So like understanding the math behind neural networks or understanding the different pieces of a neural network, getting to the transformer blocks themselves in a transformer model, the convolutional layers, you know, a piece of a critical piece of the convolutional neural networks, looking at self-attention, maybe just as an overview, like scale dot product attention at a high level, and then understanding layer normalization, why we do these things for training and how that helps with numerical stability. And here I'm working through Sebastian Rashke's book, LLMs for Scratch, um, Andre Karpathy's YouTube course I haven't gotten to yet, but that's a big one. It has, has a very good sort of conceptual understanding there. And then of course the three blue one brown videos are phenomenal. I also have my own video here of my learning through self-attention, how I went deep there and tried to piece it all together. Now for me, I've really only gone super deep into self-attention and to me, that just was basically a way to take context and update the words as the model is processing your input. I don't want to rehash that here as I have a whole video on it, but I'm still kind of digging into this level now. So again, I don't have too much more to say on it right now. But at this level, now we're getting into like advanced AI engineering, really ML engineers, or if you're building custom models or really deploying fine tuned models at scale, like that's where you should specialize here. Again, you know, go deep if you find it interesting and if you want to build these custom models or you have your own use cases you're trying to solve. And then level five is the mechanisms. Now this is like really going deep into the implementation of the components and spending that time to understand how to derive them from scratch or implement them yourselves. So here at this level, I think we're talking about like self-attention and its many variants, how to implement those, why certain activation functions might matter, different architectural variants like Mamba. Um, and this is where I think you start reading the actual research papers a bit more. There's some foundational papers I linked here that I'm intending to get to. Uh, but I think if you can get down to this level, now you can start to really grasp everything in the cutting edge research that's coming out and be able to figure out what you need to pick and choose. And folks specializing here, like these are the researchers or the advanced ML engineers, people building foundational models like my team, perhaps. Uh, I'm the data engineer on that team, so I'm not fully up to speed yet on the research, but I'd like to get here. And then the last level... Level six is, is the math. And now I think everybody should have a basic understanding of things like vectors, matrix multiplication, the partial derivatives, and even how gradient descent works at a large level. I mean, three blue, one brown and Khan Academy absolutely own this space. These are terrific resources to get ramped up. I think you only really need to go deep here is if you're developing new ways of doing AI, you're improving algorithmic efficiency, you're creating new architectures, and like you're a proper researcher here. Like you're pushing the boundaries of what's possible today. That being said, I think most people it's worth spending some time on just to wrap your head around how these things work. They'll become hugely helpful down the road. All right, so just to wrap up, remember the key is not to learn everything. I think that can be really overwhelming, but try to get a sense of which level you need for your goals and then go deeper where it matters if, it, if it's important for what you want to achieve. And I think the deeper you go in the stack, the more important it is to specialize rather than trying to get that breadth. Like for me personally, I'm focused on time series models when we get down here, but pick the level of depth that matters for your goals and, and focus and explore, of course, like find what we are most interested in or what's most relevant for you. This map is not a prescription. It's a guide to just help you focus your learning for where it matters most. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.